Alrighty friends, so for my media demonstration video today, we're going to be talking about chalk pastel and the things that you need to have a successful chalk pastel application on your artwork. So first of all, sometimes when you go to the store, it'll say soft pastel instead of chalk pastel. And I just want you to know that that means chalk pastel. The only time that you meet, you know, if you're at the store and it says oil pastel, that's a different type of pastel. But what you're looking for is something that literally says chalk or soft pastels. And what that is, is it is really a pastel is actually a French word and it's about the shape. So anything that's kind of in this shape is a type of pastel. Um, just like a crayon is a shape, it's not really a material. You can have watercolor crayons or you can have wax crayons. And for chalk pastels, uh, they can be made of chalk or they can be made of oil. In any case, we're going to be talking about chalk pastel today. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. So when you're using chalk pastel, I really recommend having these uncoated paper plates. And so these are really inexpensive. You can get them at any store really. It just means there's no waxy top, which means you can use this. It's also a little bit concave and that means that the dust stays here. It's a little bit easier to control and keep from going everywhere, okay? And usually there's like a hundred plates, so if you need more than one plate, you're, you usually have plenty to, to choose from. You're also going to need some cotton balls today. And so the cotton balls sort of keep it from getting all over your fingers, but it also gives you a little bit of control. And so I'll talk about that again later as well when we, when we talk about blending. So another thing when you're using chalk is, like I said, it's dusty. And so one thing you need is a type of fixative. And you can buy very expensive fixative that has a lot of warnings on it about inhaling it and how bad it is for you. And honestly, I don't think it's necessary. What is really great is this hairspray, the Aussie Maximum Hold Hairspray, does the job and it smells good. So basically you can spray this outside if you need to, you can spray it indoors if you need to, if you have lots of ventilation, but it's not gonna hurt you. So it's also something that doesn't smell horrible. And that makes a big difference when your kids are like, oh my gosh, this stinks so bad, or they're just happy that it smells good. It's a, it makes them happy. So this is the one I recommend. And uh, basically it's hair, it's hairspray is like glue for your hair, but it's also glue for the chalk dust. It keeps it stuck to the paper. So I definitely recommend this. Um, one thing I wanna make sure I tell you though, is you know, we draw with black permanent marker, the Sharpie. But once you're done with the Sharpie for this type of lesson, I don't want you to use it again um, because the chalk, the chalk dust would really mess your Sharpie up. So you don't want to use the Sharpie again after you start coloring with chalk. However, you can use a Prismacolor black colored pencil. It doesn't have to be Prismacolor, but everybody knows that I like these the best because they have a really dark, rich line, which kind of mimics the Sharpie line. There are black pencils that are not quite as black they're okay, I like this one the best. So keep that handy in case you need it. Um, back to the chalk pastel. So what are we gonna do today is we're gonna do a, a combination. We're gonna do chalk pastel on the sky and the water, and then I'm gonna do the rest in colored pencil. And when you use more than one material, it's called mixed media. And so we're gonna do a mixed media on this today. And I also wanna point out to you guys that if you like or subscribe, or share, or comment, um, or tag a friend, any of the above on these videos, let me know. I will send you a ma uh, one of these magnets. I'm really eager to mail these to people. I have found, though, that I have a little bit of a hard time tracking people down, um, so make sure they, uh, if you really want a magnet, you can also send me a private message in my Arts Hub inbox on the Facebook page, and that way I'll know for sure. Um, to get in touch with you. So I'm trying to get these magnets out to people. If you want one, help me out, help me spread the word and I'd be happy to send you one. All right guys, so we're gonna do the chalk first on this <clears throat> and we're gonna start with our paper plate. And again, this is from the Cote d'Azur uh, art lesson, which means the blue coast. And so I'm gonna make some really beautiful blues up here in my sky and in my water. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to use this chalk. So by putting the chalk dust on the paper plate like that, you can see it keeps it under control and it doesn't fly away so easily. 
So I'm going to put several layers of blue here. I want to really show you exactly how cool this is. So I'm taking some different shades of blue. And I'm going to even put a little bit of purple over here. Just so I have a little purple on the side in case I want some. I'm basically building up my palette right now. And so I'm also going to take some light blue. And I'm going to put some light blue over here. Kids absolutely love using chalk pastel in this way. It's like magic. They love it. So I highly, highly recommend this. And since I have one more, it's kind of a teal. I like it so much. I'm going to put it on there as well. All right, guys, you can see it gets on your fingers. It's not a big deal. You can always have another supply to have handy or some wipes or whoops, even some wet paper towels. It doesn't really matter. But now it's time to get started. So I'm going to take my cotton ball and I'm going to start to rub this together. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to rub this into my sky. And so you can see how pretty that is. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just fun and it looks great. <clears throat> so I am just going to have a little bit of fun here and show you what I mean. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? But you can see how I'm mixing different colors. I'm taking a little bit of darker colors here and there. And I want you to notice too that I'm not super concerned if it overlaps a little bit with my drawing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So don't worry if that happens. Just kind of roll with it. We're going to be using colored pencils later anyway, which will cover up a lot of that. If you don't like it, it's okay. You won't really see it much later. I kind of like that. That's sort of mysterious, dark and stormy sky a little bit, but I'm going to use some of this teal now in the water. And again, part of what the charm, part of the beauty of chalk pastel is how soft it is. It is not like oil pastel. It is not like paint. It is not like marker. It has its own unique charm. And so please just let the chalk do its magic. All right, guys. So you can see what my plate looks like. You can see what my cotton ball looks like. I'm going to recycle the plate, throw the cotton ball in the trash. Check it out. As you can see, it's dusty. And what I want you to notice is it smudges really easily and so what we want to do is not smudge it. You can kind of shake it a little to get the extra dust off. You can see how I've got all that extra dust on my paper. If you want to prevent that from getting on the back of your paper, just take a wipe or like I said a wet paper towel and just kind of wipe it off. Those of you that have been in my after school classes know that this is something I would bring to class and it really helps a lot. I would just get everybody involved to help out you can see it's still looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I also use that wipe on my own fingers, so we're in good shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this with the hairspray, okay? And so the hairspray is something that just gets the chalk to stick to the paper. So I am done with that. I'm going to let it dry for just a couple of minutes. You can always use something like this. Now remember, when I said that that wouldn't work for Sharpie, well that's because now there's hairspray, now there's chalk. I'm not going to do that. If you need to make any lines darker, you can do it with a black pencil. But in just a moment here, I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to move on to my colored pencil demonstration. And for that, we're going to talk about my giant bin of colored pencils that I love so much. My students know we all just kind of enjoy having our art supplies and our different things we have, our manual pencil sharpeners. And now it's just time to kind of enjoy coloring. So I'm going to do a little bit of this colored pencil part in real time right now. And then I'm going to do the rest in time lapse. So let's get started. Again, the manual pencil sharpener, if you've heard me say this before, it's just because it keeps your pencils sharp like this, but also it protects an electric pencil sharpener from getting clogged up and so that it doesn't work anymore. So one thing that's nice about this is I'm going to put some shading on there first. And so 
I'm going to just take a minute here and show you what I mean. So I'm using a dark color. It's kind of a purplish color. And I did that on purpose. Now you can do this with black. You can do this with gray. You can do it with blue. It's just kind of fun. There's a good example of a spot where I need a line. I just noticed that. So right there, I didn't have a Sharpie line. But you see, I added it with my pencil. And it didn't hurt anything. So now I've got a space to fill in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make the shadow side of each building this lovely purple color. I really, really, really like this art lesson. And you know, I often only do these lessons every four years. I think it's been a lot longer than four years for this lesson. I forgot how much I enjoy it. So I hope you guys are enjoying it too. So I'm going to do all the shadows first. And it's fun, you know, just kind of keep the shadows consistent, meaning like in my case, it's on the right side of each building. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to finish the rest of this in time lapse. And when I come back, we'll do a conclusion. So much fun, guys. I hope you're having fun. Here we go. as always it is just so interesting to see how these things turn out I mean I know that I'm working on this and uh, but to me it's always a surprise as well I think that's one of the most wonderful things about making art is it, it comes out different every time and there's things that happen along the way when you're working on it that you're like oh well I think I'll do that instead you know and you kind of like make decisions as you go along and so you know I worked on my stone wall I added a little blue here and there uh, I thought it was kind of fun, you know, just, just to imagine these buildings being really brightly colored. And maybe there's a little blue paint that dripped over the edge of the stone wall there. Maybe someone was painting a building and some blue paint got on there. Um, and as well as these uh, where the chalk pastel had gone over the edges, I, you can see in some places where, that, where I meant to show you that. And basically that just kind of gives it kind of a cool sort of a shaded look. Um, I think it does not take away, I think it adds to the, the bottom line, meaning like makes your drawing more interesting to look at. So guys, I'm going to give this one final spray because I think you probably noticed I added a tiny bit of chalk here. I noticed a spot that needed it. Again, right now, even though I'm done, I might say, well, I want this to be a little more blue. So I'm going to go in and do that. And uh, then I'll just make sure I spray it one more time. And so that is it for today, friends. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I'll see you next time.